All right, good afternoon, everybody. Well, uh, thank you for coming. We are going to be talking about the findings from the survey that was done. And just to make sure we're on the same page, thanks to Peter, he clarified the initial part. And let me move on to sort of give you a brief overview. Um, we are going to be talking about basically findings that primarily are going to be measured against what is called a global benchmark, which means you are not going to see results indicating what you said, but compared to the rest of the 5,000 or 1,000 organizations in the database from which a normative figure was taken. The reason for this is because these days, to be the best, you have to compare with the best. And that normative database is very stable over time. It has been now, within the last five, over half the respondents are from USA and, and so forth. So I just want that to be clear before we start off, um, so that you don't have any confusion. Can I make a point? I think that should have been explained before we filled the, the it survey. It was, but the, I mean, it was explained, and it's also in the, in a lot of the communication the, the thing is that because we uh, we were expecting a different uh, kind of, of reporting, you know, at the end of the survey, that's when we realized our expectations of that thing. And that, of course, this is a, a product I then is a survey um, that. Um, we needed to experience it. I, I was very much aware that we are being benchmarked, but I was not expecting that this is the way we would receive the, the reports. So the expectations are, are different. It's still a good way uh, of uh, receiving information, and we can still get whatever we want to get uh, later on. If I may just add. Don't worry too much about the percentile figures. Look at the general trend, comparative, which areas we need to improve, which areas we are strong in. So that's, that's, that's the idea. So the model actually helps us do two things. First is to give us an indication of where we stand so we can have some honest conversations about what needs to be done and of course to generate thoughtful actions based on the findings. Uh, as I've indicated earlier, there are four things that this survey looks at. Number one, mission. Do we know where we are going? Consistency, does our system create leverage? Involvement, are people aligned? And adaptively, are we listening to the market trade? So these are the four uh, traits that we look at. And as I indicated earlier, the figures that you see here Actually, there are four areas, each is said to less than 25 percentile comes of this, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100. So whenever a figure falls between the two ranges, that quarter is colored, and the number you see here is actually a quarter, which means where you stand relative to the rest of the database. So if you see a figure 63 means your scores are, you are better than 63 percent of the people in the database. That's, that's how it's being benchmarked by Denison. All right, how we interpret is the more color you see indicating high level of clarity and alignment, mix of clarity and confusion when you have this, and there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty when you get findings like this. But this again is very important to understand because you'll be seeing different colors uh, showing different issues. So the key thing to remember is uh, more color better, right? So what we do is when company does the survey twice, they do the first time, second time, and they find there is more color, it means they are improving relative to the benchmark that there is. So that's important. So normally first time around it doesn't, it may be a surprise, but as you improve, it gets better. All right, let's look at the results. The survey was done for C4 as a whole, functional group comparison, employment, duty post, country. So we took the data and we rejected it, breaking it up to these categories in order to understand how these categories contributed to our findings. I'll be showing that in a moment. 
All right, for the overall findings for C4, this is what we got. You can see here that these core values, customer focus and capability development, appear to be areas that are giving a lot of room for improvement. Again, just to uh, clarify, this is how C4 looks um, with, uh, in relation to the, uh, the benchmark. Yes, this is the findings in relation to the benchmark. The but to have a sort of... Yes, please. Just a quick question. Are the benchmark other organizations or are they corporations as well? Organizations primarily who have undertaken the survey. Total of 5,000 organizations have done the survey. 1,000 are taken up from that 5,000 and form the venture. So they're development and research types of organizations? Yes, this is a composite of the professional, scientific, and technical services. So now you're comparing with companies that are similar to your uh, type of work. Are they co profit or not They are combined, mixed. So in any case, it shows some indication of where we stand, and uh, this is this could be something that you should look for and try to <coughs> come up to. So that's okay. When we look at each trait, we find that there are areas that are good. For instance, employees are highly involved, and there are areas that need a bit of focus. I'm afraid that the wordings are not too clear. So I can't really do much. There's a cooperation, different parts of organizing, actively encouraged is 14. Excuse and me. people... Sorry, can you, can you yeah, I know. I, uh, I really can't look. Is it possible to make it bigger? Okay. Uh, it's, it's already in, in full screen and uh, that's the resolution. Mm -hmm. Now I'll just try to read out the ones that are important. Okay. Yeah. So this one, people of... Uh, problems often arise because we do not have the skills to do the job. Cooperation across different parts of the activity encouraged. Information is widely shared so that everyone can get information he or she wants. These are the areas that are a little bit low on the involvement trait. For consistency, core values, we, we can't seem to have, we have trouble reaching agreement on key issues. Uh, is an area and uh, there is an ethical code that guides our behavior that is low. So these are the two areas that are concerned. And when it comes to adaptability, the primary area is customer focus. As I mentioned just now, customer focus was low, but we have to understand the term customer focus here in the context of stakeholders, because that was what was written in the survey form. Um, the areas that were relatively low compared to the others was, was that all team members have a deep understanding of stakeholders' uh, needs and once the interests of stakeholders internal or external often get ignored in our decisions so these are terms that got relatively low score suggesting that there is a uh, issue with regard to stakeholder understanding in terms of their needs and wants that has brought the adaptability low um, in terms of mission fairly clear strategic direction is clear goals and objectives are all right so in the mission so what we can say in short in summary is uh, when we look at the highest and the lowest scores compared to two, and we take all these terms together, what this is is the good part is the overall mission is well established and we intend to accomplish this done in a very flexible manner and employees are highly involved. But the area for improving to improve our understanding of and consider what our stakeholders need when making decisions. We should encourage changes to take place and develop an ethical code that guides behavior. So that is a summary of the uh, line items that will be obtained. What, what was the non-response rate for those questions? Because I personally had a hard time answering the questions about stakeholders. What was the rate of response to these questions? Is, is that taken into account in the analysis? No, it's not. If it's, if it's anonymous, it's that. If it's like not, if you can't answer the question. Yes. So if 99% of the employees of Seaport couldn't answer a question and one person ranked it lowly, it can end up in the lowest score. So perhaps we should have mentioned earlier that there were 126 respondents out 
of the uh, 240 in total that we were expecting. So that's so roughly 50%, 50 responded or participated in the survey. But whether any one respondent left the blank or left a question unanswered, I think that's Brahman's question. Yeah. Is that because I think there were some yeah. questions that many of us felt we weren't able to answer. So the response rate could be one or two people for some of these questions. And then one outlier can have a strength higher than the But there was a column not applicable, if you remember. Yes. So what I want to know is how many people chose that. I'm sorry, I'm not in a position to answer. I don't know at this point in time. So that wasn't taken into consideration. I don't know whether it's taken into consideration, but I don't know the actual numbers. I think right now. If I can find So I think we have a problem yeah. here. Uh, we have to scroll down. Uh, that's the the one I I think this this problem is important. Maybe you show the hundred percent I can read through. Are you gonna scroll it down? Can you help me scroll it down? All right, what we did in addition to the general survey was look at three areas, uh, engagement, trust, and commitment. Um, maybe you can show it up, please. Scroll up. Scroll up. Um, one more, huh? Okay, this is the key engagement report. Now, this figure here you see is actual mean of the data that you submitted. It is not the center. So my suggestion would be let's not worry too much about this, as Peter mentioned, but you want to look at this figure. So this is 4.01 overall for engagement factor, how to scale of five. And uh, these are the figures for the individuals. Um, the one that is, appears to be relatively low compared to all this, my work energizes me, but as you can see, the variation is not very much. That's about four. So you look at your own findings. As far as the trust factor is concerned. I don't understand this. If those numbers are high, then they, then they should be very high with the benchmark. Unless, because unless the benchmark group is, is lower, has lower expectations. This means the benchmark overall group is higher than, than what you have. 81% of people have more trust in their organizations than we do, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's fair, like as, as Peter, I think, was trying to say in the beginning to ignore that. Even if if we have a 4.2, yeah, but 80% of organizations perform better than we do, I think we also need to pay attention to that. This is why, this is probably the reason why Denison actually... We do it this way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the whole reason for but doing this. This is the way they present the results. Mm -hmm. But in our management group discussions, we wanted to know what it is we needed to address within the organization. Yes, we're interested in how we compare with the other organizations, but what are our priorities? So mm -hmm. we were concerned with uh, the right hand side of, of the table. So it means that even we score 2.3.4. It's not good enough yes. compared to the. Uh, yes. Depends yeah, on the dimension. context. It may. It depends on the context. You cannot really make such uh, a sweeping conclusion. I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, compared to the. Uh, benchmark compared to the benchmark is yeah. interesting. Yes, we belong to the like 25th. Per, and I, that's another thing I would like to understand. Is it we as an organization belong to you know lower than the 25th? Yes. Did yes. the respondents, the number of respondents, uh, represent, uh, you know, the findings, the findings that yeah. you have provided, all the figures that you have, that findings, right. okay. in value compared right. to that available, is at mm -hmm. 10%. Okay, so that, that may be interesting. Still, I would like to contextualize it. Fine, we are the benchmark are professional technical services. Sorry, this is benchmark all organizations. Okay. Of all is organizations. Yes. This okay. is so not only the so this is all the employers in their database, which 
to me, yeah, it's interesting, but those employers include oil and gas industry, private companies, hospitals, I don't know what else. Yeah, we're scoring in the 12th percentile relative to oil and gas in terms of that we're conducting synthesis <laughs> with integrity. <laughs> it's interesting, but you know what? It's more interesting for me to know how we are as, as an organization. First of all, we need to know what we need to address. You know, as a priority, but it's it's good information. But I would give more attention to the right hand side of the scale because the I really don't know what the employer is. So sorry. So the mean, the maximum value in the mean column can be five. five. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So we we so so all these organizations are reporting fours or fives. The the benchmark group. Maximum is five, so they are probably. So why would they even ask you to do a survey if everybody's so happy? <laughs> I mean, that's extraordinary. I find it extraordinary that the benchmark numbers are so high for these kind of questions. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, no, but I mean, even if there's, that means they're scoring higher than three yes. in any organization. No, I'm sorry. So it doesn't matter. I'm just saying the actual numbers. The, the, you refer to like I'm saying that from these results, it, it implies that a lot of these organizations are scoring higher than four or five as the mean value in the benchmark group, right? Which I find amazing for... Because for, we are at the lower... No, no, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care about where, where C4 is, but I'm just wondering in general, it seems strange that all these organizations are scoring that high, and then they would be asking to do surveys or whatever else. I find that extraordinary. Okay, we are asking questions, and this is a good... This is the reason why, why we have this meeting, so we can understand the results. Um, if, if we are actually, if, if our mean is over three, which is, you know, a good mean, why is it that we belong to the lower percentile? Because the, for the database they have, the mean is even much higher. Right. Most maybe it's more like five or four something. So the mean would be yeah, five. So it's five. If, if it's, if it's, uh, if it's that, if we're that low with a three, then it must be higher for everyone else. So that means hundred percent of people are reporting fives because once you report fours, then the mean's going to turn out to be three or four point right. five. Or okay, that's true. Isn't that interesting information? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The mean or media or whatever. Yeah, that was raised during the meeting. And uh, it has never been asked for, but I'll make a special request to see if it is the media. Yeah. So yeah. when we are compared to the mean. Okay. The, the valid end that's listed there, that, that's for all people who responded, even if they responded not applicable. And the valid end is for all those who responded. Valid. Even if they responded that it wasn't applicable. I suppose so. I'm not sure that I suppose so. Yes. Is it possible for us to find out this 1,000, I mean, like an idea of this 1,000 companies that we are being benchmarked against? This is more than 1,000. No, hang on. This is more, this is. This is their full data. So they based on 1,000 yeah. as for the beginning. Then, yeah, that's very fine. <laughs> When Denison started this way back in the 90s, until now, they have had 5,000, more than 5,000 companies. And these, they used to take a benchmark for the certain plaques that you saw. This is a relatively new, probably three years, four years ago. So it's not 1,000, it's very much less. That is why whenever we show this graph, we will highlight, don't worry too much about it. The percentile you can look at the figure because this is not 1000. If it's 1000, it's more reflective. That is why we're very comfortable talking about the culture survey using the percentile. This is less. I can find out how many for this if you want to, but it's definitely not 1000 because the number of companies that took part took this survey is much less than those that took the census. So that could be why, as you said just now, 
it may not be reflective of the average of materials. Probably you have to tell them we have two surveys, one is for the survey and one is on the trust, commitment and engagement. Yes, they are two different surveys. They are two different surveys. They are not combined. This is an added on module. If you wanted to, you could take it. But the normative database is not the same as the country's. Can you, can you do, with the raw data, can you do a histogram of all the scores? Because the mean is also kind of meaningless. You know, because they could have a few people reporting fives and 100 people reporting zeros, and you can get 2.5 easily that way, and then everything looks the same. That's the problem with these kind of surveys, is that like everything, everything averages the noise, and every, on average, everybody's fine. Okay, may I just, uh, sorry, not too much. What I would like to inform everybody is that the management group asked for the raw data. And I'd like, you know, probably for, for the reason that you also would like to try other things. I would like, however, to uh, assure everybody that brought this out to the management group that, of course, there was a concern for anonymity. And when we do ask for the raw data, we will make sure that all uh, identification with the individuals are going to But I have to confirm whether that's possible to begin with. Yeah. To be honest, this I don't know. It's never been asked before yeah. by any because, company yeah. for the raw data. Because so it's a question make a special of, request. of uh, ownership of the data. Can, you, can we suggest what you can do analysis with the raw data? And then you guys every, can present and, uh, the results? Of course, everything is possible. We can ask Denison for all kinds of reports that we that want. That is possible. In fact, you have already asked. I've checked with Denison. They said they can granulate further to get into the to determine it, but not a problem. The only and thing is that it costs. All right, so then we have the trust factor, uh, 3.42, and commitment 3.44, the average. All right, there was a question then, I think this was a question on uh, whether there is equal opportunities provided, and it was equally split, roughly 50-50 said, 50 said yes, 50 said no. And the other question was whether there is sufficient work-life balance. About 67 percent agreed, and 37 percent said there's no proper work-life balance. So this is just the additional questions that are asked. Well, let me look at the functional group comparison. What we did was we compared the survey results from research and non-research group. Uh, I suggest you, you we focus on the, the pattern, and we find that from the pattern. Uh, the non-research group uh, had a slightly lower in terms of the consistency, and uh, the rest looks roughly the same. But if we look at this study, we can see here clearly that um, the non-research group, this side, this side of the sorry, this side of the chart, this side of the chart is the non-research or really research. So when you see it, the graph coming up this side means it's higher on the research. So research group had a higher perception of uh, involvement being better, consistency, and mission. Whereas the non-research group found that C4 had a higher level of identity. So if you would look at the overall research group perception, the C4 is more performance-based compared to non-research. Again, talking in a very general sense. <coughs> this is what you can take away from this finding. Um, some areas there was big variation, the rest were about the same. But uh, things like team orientation, uh, both research and non research scored low. And this one on capability development, uh, the skills to do the job, both scored low. This is a common finding. Even every survey that I present, we do not have the skill necessary to do the job, somehow gets down to the low finding. I think it's because people are spending more and more effort developing skills, so probably that percent of the is going on. So this is something not to be worried about, but it's a very general kind of finding. Uh, consistency also when we talk about this part here, there is an ethical code that uh, determines, guides our behavior, determine what is right and wrong. Uh, fairly low, both research and non-research. Uh, 
So that has affected the core values quite, quite, quite a bit. Um, yeah, customer focus, both sides, both research and non-research felt that stakeholder expectations are not very clear. In organizational learning, we see learning as an opportunity for improvement. Uh, the non-research has a higher perception that that's the case as opposed to the researchers. So, can you just go back to customer focus? Who are the customers? Stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Internal, external stakeholders. So they're not people working with you? But they could be internal stakeholders like top management, your work staff, suppliers, vendors, whoever have an interest in what you do or in a position to influence the decisions that you make or will be influenced by decisions that you make their statement. So my boss would be my statement? Yes. But isn't it possible that the wording of that question is because we didn't understand, C4 respondents in general didn't understand what stakeholders were, we didn't, we weren't able to respond that we knew what their priorities were or whatever. It's possible, that's quite possible. But I think in this organization, stakeholders are people outside the institute that we're working with, in not uh, the boss, that's what I thought of the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Yes, that's right. That's true. Could be internal, external was indicated, but then if that's the general term, then it could have led to a you know, misconception. Actually, the word is not stakeholders. In original survey, it's customer. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. customer is meant to mean internal, external. But when we reviewed the survey with the team, they felt the word customer is not so good, you stakeholder. So that's why you say it's stakeholder. I was just bringing up the issue of customer and stakeholder terms, it seems. I, uh, my interest actually is whether this was fully understood, because we believe that people may not uh, fully understand the question questions, but it's okay. It's still, I'm, we're still getting an impression, we're still getting perceptions. So don't worry about it. We have other problems. We will still take into account whatever information we get from from the results. If it says that you know the stakeholders' interests are not taken into account, we will still be interested in that information. So mission is generally all right. We go. And both both sides. If you notice the lowest cost, just like variation. So as this group or research groups, adaptability. Uh, whereas on this side, more consistency. So consistency means things like processes, the way we do things, how we get things done, that kind of thing. So that, uh, in the opinion, perception of non-research group could be improved. Whereas the research group says, you know, we're not really adaptable to the changing requirements for research. What people need, we're not getting in. We still have to work harder and things like that. So that could be very loosely uh, interpreted in that context. Sorry, can you just get back to that? I think that's very concerning. There's an ethical code that guides our behavior. It tells us right from wrong. We're both in the research and non research group. Identify that as a major problem. I think that's a, that's a big issue. And I feel that we're skimming this very quickly, but as we have to. But how, how are you going to engage with these kind of issues that you have to know? Well, we're dealing with perception. Right. So perception may be right, may be wrong. Exactly. It's up to us to clarify perceptions. Okay. It, it is important to why I missed the questionnaire in the first place. Yeah. I'm sorry? The more I missed the questionnaire in the first place. The, it's a perception survey. It's, it, the previous surveys also that CIPA had are perception surveys. The only difference is that this is really more focused on organizational culture. There was no focus in the past on the perception surveys that c had, nor there were no follow-ups on the results, or whether results were even discussed with the staff. So we, I think this is already an improvement in <laughs> this practice. So, but I agree with you, there are some probably some things that we really need to pay attention more seriously because it's interesting. I'm not saying that, you know. I don't think it's interesting. I think the fact that the staff body perception is questioning whether we operate in an ethical way is, is a fundamental problem. Yeah, yeah. 
and, and we have ethics in our mission statement. I agree. We, we have to take this at the management. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But what? Okay, but don't panic right away. <laughs> I'm not panicking. I just think it's, a, it's an important issue. Yeah. yeah, it is. We agree. Yes. So this is the engagement factor. Research and non-research, not much difference, but uh, the research is likely higher. Uh, even the trust research. Excuse me, just about the engagement thing. Um, so just the fact that half of the people did not respond to the survey, I think speaks a lot about engagement. <laughs> not just the numbers. And if, if it's possible to see some breakdown, like about you know whether it's international staff, whether it's men, women, we like the, of, of who did not respond, and <laughs> to try to, and like maybe what the positions are in the organization, and it's senior staff that's not responding, like because that to me that's the most interesting, in some sense, the most interesting telling part of this. Yeah, that's if this is the engagement, that's not really the true engagement. It's much lower than that. No. Again, this is benchmark. You know, this is no, even that for whatever our score is, is actually, there's lots of zeros there that should be averaged in, I think. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we can't tell if it's trust or engagement that's causing people to not respond. That's trust and that's coming. All right, let's look at gender. This will be really interesting. Hold your breath. <laughs> this is for the female. Oh, this is for the male. 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 This is for the the female. respondents perceive differently how performance focused we are compared to the male respondents. They are more critical. And that's what this suggests. Especially on areas relating to processes and consistency, degree of involvement. This is not to do with you, it has to do with how the respondent sees the organization as a whole. It's how you perceive the organization. So we have to look at it in that light. So that is very interesting. Um, the breakdown is about the same, but the Report is quite different. When we look at each and all the traits, we find that the findings this size, the male is higher. So we find that uh, <laughs> Males reporting higher strategic and direction, vision compared to females. Males report ranking higher overall involvement. So the question is how come? When you compare between male and female, there are a number of things that you can do. First, C4, I suppose, is dominated by female. No, no, we have a lot. This response is by and second, it's uh, also distribution of male and female. Yeah, okay. with uh, Asians and yes. research, yes. research. Because it's not necessarily uh, gender. Yeah, it's like in gender. Yes. Okay. So, one of the things we're thinking about is asking for other reports that correlate gender with other um, factors, like gender and years of service, gender and Countries where they employ. Yes. So I don't understand why there's no bars on the female side because that means that of all the organization, C4 had the lowest score. This is primarily a comparative analysis. Within C4. So within C4, the comparison is within C4. So and the bar the represents what? This represents the percent the percentile. We compare it. See here 34, empowerment is 34. We look at empowerment here is 60, this is 26, 60 minus 26 is 34. So it's the difference. So if this is 
higher than oh. death by 24, 34 of okay. that side. Mm -hmm. If this is higher than death by so much, it goes that side. Uh, so the this. Is what percentage is enough? Do you mean the benchmark? The benchmark. Benchmark, we do not have breakdown. But this comparison, this, uh, these figures they were put up were benchmark against your overall findings. But when we did this analysis, we are not looking at the, the benchmark. We're just comparing the findings in terms of percentile made and things. So if you find this is higher, means for that company, like for C4, that is the difference in percentile scores between the two. This will be the, the list of high and highest and lowest scoring for male and female? So this is like, this is uh, 33, that's 40, this is 38, it's 43, 63, 37. <laughs> But I guess uh, more female work uh, in one recent group than the other. They allow our I mean, that the female work mostly at C4 work in the mm -hmm. quantum field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Possible. This is nothing to do with male work. Mm -hmm. This is the research knowledge. Yeah, so this is the uh, general, but when we compare this and that, not this is a similar to this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Maybe it's because, yeah. not because of the yeah. because of the nature of the Yeah. So it's not necessarily about gender. Yeah, exactly. So actually, sorry, if you think it was bad. So 56 and 63 makes like what? 119 out of, out of 126 respondents. That means. What, there are those who did not declare any, any gender? It's possible. They would, did not declare any sex or absorption. Yeah, I agree. Can you go? Um, so that's a summary. Uh, capability development, uh, there is a very high response coming from male compared to female, there's one area that's different. The rest on this side, all values, it is about, about the same, talking about ethical code of conduct, ignoring core values of each other. And this uh, is what is important. Okay, customer focus, again, all civil. I, I think your point about probably the misunderstanding of the term stakeholder, that should be factored in. I think that's a very valid point in front of us. So we can take that when we analyze these findings as well. And the word customer also. But we did convert to stakeholder, but perhaps we should have defined the word stakeholder as well. Okay, but you better if, yeah, get an understanding of what people meant by stakeholder by surveying them or something. So uh, strategic direction and intent and goals and objectives considerable difference between male and female. Our vision is about roughly the same. Nothing much really is lost. <laughs> Can you read them out loud? Alright, which one would you the lowest? The lowest scores. Okay. There is an ethical code that guides our behavior about what is right and wrong. There is a clear and consistent set of uh, values that guide what we do. Why uh, is Attempts to provide change. Uh, sorry, attempts to create change usually is usually met with resistance. And the, the rest there? Information is widely shared so that anyone can get the information he or she needs when it is needed. And the last is our approach to doing business is very consistent and, and uh, for, predictable. And for the, the males, what was what, what We often have trouble reaching agreement on key issues. 
there is an ethical code that guides our behavior and lets and differentiates from right and wrong. The interests of the stakeholders is often ignored in our decisions. <laughs> All right, sorry. Anyway. All right. Problems often arise because we do not have skills necessary to do the job. And the last one is cooperation across different parts of the organization is actively encouraged. Right. Okay. Interesting. I'll read off from here. Okay, that's the engagement factor. Um, Sorry, those those responses are from a single question, is it? So I you haven't aggregated it. This response that's a summary of the uh, yeah, sure. line items, yeah, yeah, summary. Yeah. Good. So engagement factor, uh, we find 46 against 10, 46 percent of 10 people. But if you look at the mean values, they're going to say 4.16 against 3.86. Notice this one? I'm passionate about my work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the what actual scores? The actual scores are 4.29 versus 3.9. Not really very different. But it's not really very different. Right? If you convert the percentile, it comes out quite a bit. Alright? Trust. Again, you can see. Um, the ones that are really low are these two. Let me read, what, read up to you what they are. Um, the organization conducts business with integrity. We are getting 3.95 male, 3.52 female. That's me. People who work here are honest. Three. <laughs> 3.79 male, 3.57 female. That's about out of five. And the one on top, this one, people in this organization have good motives and intentions. Seven against 41. That's 3.51, 3.84. So look at commitment. Um, okay, let's look at this one here. I continue to work here more out of choice than necessity. 3.39 female, 3.62. This one is... It would be difficult for me to leave this organization. <laughs> oh, the security. You are more than 4% of everybody who says that. But what's interesting, I think uh, Lisa pointed out, is this one and that one. The one on top says, I would recommend working for this organization to others. And that's this. <laughs> then the other one says, uh, it would be difficult for me to leave the organization. So, that's the comment. Sorry, the last one. The last one is, I really think about looking for a job <laughs> with another organization. <laughs> Yeah, this is called 46 percent down. But actually it's 3.59, 3.06. Men are almost the 50th percent. Where is it true? Ladies, we're doing
Okay, so. Uh, yeah, look at it. Do you think we'll see what this finding is? This is HQ. This is where 93 of people are. So it's about the same as overall. I think it's contributes quite a bit to the overall findings. Africa. Uh, looks like small color, but the numbers are less 16. But still, they have got a better perception. So that's uh, better profile in it, but it's more clarity indicated for strength generation region, high for very slow score of customer focus. That's in America. So they apparently have a better perception. It's hard to see this. <laughs> so, responding from Latin and a perception support is more performance based compared to Africa and it was in the Alright, this is the comparative of the three. So, you find that this is less high. Alright, seniority, senior and middle management. Senior management. So it appears that the obviously clarity of mission is there and adaptability. You see that we are more adaptable, but middle management is not perceived as a very Both seem to be. I mean, please don't take this as this is your finding. This is relative to the therapies. But it's good to have a feel of the relative you know, uh, traits. And uh, if you were to analyze, compare the two. This is the senior uh, management here. You only have five senior management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was So there are five actually, but so then could have affected the distribution. Anyway, um, we feel based on the findings, SIPO is more performance based, where if you host senior management team to others, which is one group of others showing their data. Others' the findings seem to be better than I'll show you others. Are you going to see this? It's about the same, it's just rather simple. So the same actually. The same statements. Uh, same statements have been shown, so they keep repeating. Do you want to read the lowest cost and highest cost? Okay, I'll read. Our senior management, I'll start with the senior management, lowest cost. Problems often arise because we do not have the skills necessary to do the job. <laughs> they didn't say that. Say that. <laughs> but this is again percentile with all the database. So let's, let's look at it in that context. It could have been higher. Second one, it is easy to reach consensus even on difficult issues. There is an ethical code that guides our behavior and tells us right from wrong. <laughs> we view failure as an opportunity for learning and improvement. Teamwork is used to get work done rather than hierarchy. This lowest cost are, there is a characteristic management style and distinct set of management practices. All team members have a deep understanding of stakeholders' wants and needs. Information is widely shared so that everyone can get the information he or she needs when it's needed. Ignoring core values will get you in trouble. Our approach to doing business is very consistent and predictable. So this is the engagement factor difference. The light color is middle management, and dark is senior management. Just look at this 3.84, 4.16, this is more that may not be good. So it's roughly about the same uh, in all, except this one enthusiastic, uh, 3.6, 4.05. So trust factor. So roughly 
be about to say 3.5, 3.4. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Wow. So that's the thing. I mean, he has a senior manager, manager. Of course, you're going to say the decisions are made with the employee's best interest in mind. Not going to say otherwise. But conversely, <laughs> they're, conversely, they're saying that people yeah. in the organization do not have to do that. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a problem. So let's look at this one. I don't want this to you know, influence your perception of this. Because it's a perception study anyway. But this is relative to the benchmark, not I know, but so, but what it says is oh, what, what the difference in the percentile says tells us the degree what the reach. normal distribution, if the normal distribution is large, or if the normal distribution for the benchmark is small, and then if it's a very small difference in the yes. normal distribution of the benchmark, that's when we see these big yes. gaps, despite right. the fact that our means that's are very close, right? That's right, that's right. What is the lowest number you see? For the means, you know, it seems to be around three. three. I see a three, as two point eight zero. There are few secrets in this organization. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think you should do the median or something, you know, because the mean is you just need a few people to get fives and the whole numbers. To report the mean and the medians. And the for, percent for, of people that didn't answer the question. <coughs> but to, to get the responses, then you know with the median, 50% of the people said, said below this number, and 50% of the people said above the number. Yeah, the mean can be extremely skewed. You can have hundreds of people saying zero, and then six or seven people are reporting five, and then comes out to an average of 2.5 or something like that. So I think uh, because why don't we speak uh, later? Um, but what we need to know is whether we can get the raw data. Well, you don't need the raw data, but you need to report the summary statistics in a different way than just the. Is that possible? I will check. Can Maybe we, just write and send me what we need. Can we make a specific request how we want the sure. a person, a different person? I will send you forward that request. Can you work with me on the way you want the statistics yeah. to be requested? Yeah. So this seniority analysis between the middle man, apart from middle management and senior management, that's the findings. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the others, but we're not comparing others to management. Yeah, Why not? That's how we were told to do this. So the demographics actually have senior management, interior management, and then others. Others meaning, you know, you may not be supervising uh, people or, you know. Isn't it, rather than comparing senior management to middle management, would it be more useful to compare management to other? If comparing senior management with a sample size of five to anything doesn't make sense. I'm there is still, uh, there could still be a difference between behavior, beliefs, and assumptions and perceptions of legal management and senior management. Even so, but more important, I think, is the difference between management and not management. Because that's even what yeah. we were saying, that could be the driving factor between the differences yeah. in gender. So we probably need an additional report. We start well, what's that one on senior management and others, so maybe we can have met the legal management and others. Because in any case, senior management, we know it's on the eight, and everybody knows. Uh, knows there are many are. reports you can get. It's a question of what you want and why. If you have valid reasons, you might as well. This is a trust factor. That's coming here. Okay, company. Develop versus developing. Uh, developing countries' perception is much higher compared to developing countries. This is the breakdown. So no, sorry, this is not about where you work, whether you work in a developed country, whether your, your nationality is, uh, you know, whether you come from a developed country. It's about your nationality. 
business. Customers have to focus again, go and low. Do you want me to read this? Yes? Yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, we're running out of time. Engagement, trust. I, I, I'm done. All right. This, this is just, interesting. This I would like. Uh, this is two years or less. That's the findings. Three years or oh, six years. <laughs> six years. <laughs> three years. Three <laughs> <Nine> years. <or laughs> And then there's a creating an understanding, common understanding of the data, where you confront the data and you try to reconcile with the figures and see whether or not there's something else you need, more data, clarification. And then only we choose to shift the culture. So we are here now. Once you choose to shift the culture, you need to center and line on our need for culture action. And then there's action planning, implement evaluation. That's step four and five. So that's that's the status of this at this point in time. So what we do is after the debrief, there's a lot of issues that we need to do to prioritize an action plan coming from interaction, conversation, discussions, review, further reports and debates, and then we implement monitoring programs. So what we recommend is from the big picture you find out, sorry, from high scores you find out which are the strongest, how important those are to the job important to career, whether it's clustered in one trade. Those that are low scores, again, which are the lowest, are they important uh, to the organization effectiveness? We look at teams like bottom five, most important cluster, top five, most important. Because if it's a bottom and it's not really relevant or not important, it's not applied to the business that you do, it's not something that warrants immediate action. But if something is central like ethics in research, it better warrant something, action. So we really got to sit down and grapple with this after more clarity comes out, perhaps from reanalysis of data or getting more reports. And I'm certainly going to help you <coughs> to do that because unless we come to terms with the numbers, say okay, there is something we have to look at, we go for it. We don't do everything. We just focus one or two. I've seen companies only focus on one issue, and by focusing on that issue, the others improve. That's very interesting. And the next time you do the same when things improve, then you know you're on the right track. So that's, that's how it goes. So these are some of the uh, recommendations. We can have culture conversations, talk to people about why they said this, what was the basis for that perception. As I said, perception can be right or wrong. If it's wrong, we've got to clarify the perception. If it's, if, it's, if it's right and it's not so good, then we've got to make a change. So it's either this way or that. We should definitely conversation. Sorry, it's conversations. Conversations, not conservation. <laughs> After the conversations, <laughs> we will have focus group discussions and practical changes made, and then we review and redefine the proposed strategy. So basically, these are some of the preliminary things we do, and maybe look at overall development plans and stuff. So that, in a sense, concludes this presentation. I must say that you have been very kind 
to throw very interesting questions at me, and I'll try my very level best to address those questions the best I can. I'm sorry, I'm not in position to answer all those questions because I don't have the raw data with me. This analysis is done in the US. I am coordinating the analysis here, but I'll work with Lisa to get whatever more you want and try my best to get it from there. Then you maybe have a better understanding of the situation. All right?